Hi again, everybody. Believe it or not, this is one of my favorite lecture topics. In fact, it is my favorite because it's not technical. And instead, it's about thinking, seeing well, having fun, and surprising yourself and others with the great pictures you pull off. Really, if you can pull this one off, making something special out of the mundane, you can do anything. What I especially like about trying to make something special out of a visually quiet place is that nobody does this really, very few anyway. So when I'm able to get a killer frame out of something that everybody thinks is a dog of a situation, it really makes me feel good. So you wanna know a secret? It's not impossible. Sometimes it isn't even that hard. At my brother's house here in Atlanta, his son is just a tender little moment. His son's not feeling very well. You can really see the connection here. And little Sam's face lit perfectly, stands out against that chair. It's just a nice little tender moment of both of them at this age. Just love this. One I like a little bit more even, we've even put it here in the uh, teaching company uh, stage, is this one. Little Sam, very, very uh, upset over having to lay outside in the leaves. He was a little cold, he said. He didn't like it. Didn't take very many pictures of him. But the color, the way that red, that red leaf stands out against his shirt, and the emotion, the nice soft palette of color, and he's really upset. He's out in these cold leaves, he doesn't like it. Oddly enough, ice cream seemed to revive him a couple minutes later, and he was just fine. It's amazing, the healing powers of ice cream. So, you know, I live in Nebraska on purpose. People say that if you can make good pictures in Nebraska, you can shoot good pictures anywhere taking something special from the mundane maybe. At first glance, it looks visually quiet, but they don't know a little secret. You can take good pictures no matter where you are. All you have to do is think a little bit. That's all there is to it. So literally, all the pictures you're seeing right now were shot in Nebraska, very quiet place. All were made from what we call flyover country, the places that most people only see out of the window of an airplane. And then they just close their window mainly to take a nap. But look closer at a place. It's not boring at all. Look at how we have a framing device here in this wheat. Nice and dramatic. Beautiful, look at this. Perfect, a little framing device. We know where we are. We're down low in the wheat. The light is soft. All the things we've been talking about. Or this, this is a little twisted. What kind of dad takes a picture of his daughter as she's coming out of anesthetic for having her tonsils removed? Well, I do. Because Spencer's poking her cheek like he pokes her bubble gum with his finger poking her cheek to see if he can wake her up. But look at this, perfectly, perfectly presented against this bed, perfect, with light coming down from above. Doesn't get any better than that. Now, I don't overwork it, I just shoot a frame or two. I don't know, it's one of my favorites. There must be something wrong with me, huh? I just love good visuals, that's all there is to it. Or this, lots and lots of color, lots of drama. One ear of corn there, rule of thirds, rule of thirds. There it is, lots of color, soft light. He stands out well from the background. I get it. Dramatic, it's dramatic. Nebraska is a dramatic place. In fact, it looks great. Mud volleyball, talk about rule of thirds. Right in here, that's where the action is. Smile, smiles, pointing finger. White puffy cloud holding the other side together. Mud volleyball, you ever heard of that? We've got it in Nebraska. Or a horse that's dead. Actually, it's not dead. He's just rolling around scratching himself on his back. But at Chimney Rock, our most famous landmark, this is just out on a trail ride, middle of the daylight, but look at how we're perfect here in terms of the background against this horse. We've really got his legs sticking out here. We don't really want to have those legs up into these other horses or those other people. Or just Ellen and Cole, my kids, waving to each other at the end of the day. That little figure down there waving, just that little extra touch, and the picket fence and the tree, and they're silhouetted. Nice, just nice. Or in a helicopter photographing the sower, the statue on the top of the state capitol building. Helicopters help. Or on the top of the parking garage getting the marching band. Or in Morrill Hall, in, in the big room where they have the, his, the uh, fossilized elephants hanging there. We used to have elephants in Nebraska. Just right there. Joel Nielsen, one of the curators, stands out perfectly. He's using a light to see where he's dusting the skeleton or at the end of the day at Lake McConaughey. Just a nice relaxing scene, a little bit of ambient light in the sky, good light down low. Or a B-2 stealth bomber over Nebraska, look at that, perfect. 
perfect. It was amazing to me. There were people that knew where their farms were in that photograph down below. If you look in here, there were people that knew where their farms were located. They called and asked for prints. I sold a lot of prints of this picture. B-2 stealth bomber over western Nebraska. Or the middle of nowhere day in Ainsworth, Nebraska. Why does this picture work? Soft light, the kids stand out and read easily right here, being towed along, little guy in the background. It's just about cleaning things up and making things read, making them understandable. That's it, that's it. But there's a lot to it, isn't there? There's a lot to it. This layering we've been talking about, layering and really building information into your pictures, it's tough. It's a bit like if you were a musician. It's different being able to play row, row, row your boat on a piano versus being able to play Mozart. It's very different. It's just a matter of practice, though. It really is. Paying attention and practicing. You know, there are great photos to be taken, no matter where you are. I don't care where you live. Great pictures are all around you. And I mean that. I live that every day. For the subject of this lecture, I want us to take the most boring places we can and make great frames. Places like hotel rooms. Yes, indeed, hotel rooms the most, most boring places possible. I travel all the time for my job and I'm constantly in hotels. And I challenge myself to make good pictures in hotel rooms, always. I just want to stay sharp, really, mentally. But a hotel room to me is excellent because it's cleaned off. It isn't cluttered like my house. And so there's a stage there. There's a nice, usually a nice window source. It's a stage. See what kind of pictures we can make. Let's see what we've got going on. Of course, when I'm with my family, that's easy to do because they're always doing something. They can trash a hotel room in no time flat. Nice soft light. I'm always looking for that nice soft light every time. This is in a hotel room where Kathy and I didn't have the kids in Moscow. We actually stayed on Red Square. And here she stands out perfectly in that dress on the white. It's just a nice, this blows out a little bit, a little bit too hot there, isn't it? Overexposed. It's just a grab shot when we first got there after flying all the way from the United States. Spencer running around, just the dance of life, grab shots. I'm not working these things overly hard. I'm not shooting over and over again. They're just grab shots. That's what I try to do. You know, I think all the time, how can we make good pictures in the most boring places? Can we make excellent pictures in hotel rooms? Yeah, absolutely. I do it all the time. For example, my kids, they do unexpected things in a hotel room. Spencer decides to show me his muscles while he's wearing wearing special swim trunks, right? They're walking around, they're hopping around. They're wearing these weird outfits all the time, constantly. I like the way we're right in the face of SpongeBob here and he's pointing at his sister. He's trying to wake her up. He wants to go swimming and she doesn't want to get out of bed. Again, nice soft light down low, tells a little story. Is it a perfect frame? No, it's not a perfect frame. It's not, but it's something that means something to me and it's fun and it's lit well, and sometimes the composition's there, and sometimes it's not. I'm not really working these things. I'm just, I'm documenting, and I'm trying to use my techniques, trying to think about rule of thirds, leading lines. Mainly I'm just trying to get something sharp and interesting and quick, because I do not want to ruin our vacation, right? So we see all sorts of stuff. It's different than home. They like those mundane hotel rooms. My kids do, just because it's different, and they're very excited about that. But to me, it's all about the relationships, just like we were talking with the last lecture. It's all about relationships. How do we show relationships in a different way, in a way that we haven't seen before? Well, how about this? This speaks to relationship. Spencer laying on top of his mom as they're watching TV. Feet piled on top of each other. Uh, it can be a little relationship picture. It could be something that's very stark, hardly anything to it. It could be just my laptop and glasses and showing I'm in an exotic place. I email that back home, say, here I am. This is the dead of winter back home. I'm someplace where they have a tropical feel and palm trees. It could be hair draped over the back of a chair. My editor from National Geographic, Kim Hubbard, stopped to visit me. We, she stopped by my room on the way out. She had this beautiful hair, put it right there, a little bit of light. Fine. I wish it didn't have this line coming out of her, coming out of her face there. I should have moved over a little bit, I should have. But it was about the luster of the hair and the clean room. I shoot this kind of thing all the time. I'm always looking, I love working in hotel rooms. Kind of weird, huh? Or this, a friend brought a toad by for me to photograph because he knew that I liked photographing in hotel rooms. And the color here matches the chair and we're down low 
and it's intimate. It's fun, it's different. It's just weird, it doesn't have to make sense, you know? You know, sometimes when I'm really bored, I go on the road a lot to do public speaking, and yes, I am for hire. I think, what can I do with this, with this room that I have, stark as it is, by myself? What can I do right now? Well, here I am in a hotel room one day, and I said, I'll, I've got some duct tape, I'll put duct tape on my mouth to see how that looks. Anything to make an interesting frame, things I haven't tried before. And I realized, well, maybe that's a little bit over the top. So this is a little bit more thoughtful. I don't know, maybe it's an illustration of uh, freedom of speech, I don't know. But it's just something, I like the way the shirt is, and the tape kind of has that colorful feel to it. The background's very, very clean and neutral. The light's soft. It's a nothing frame, but it's something. It's something. And you know what? It makes me realize that a hotel room is not the most mundane thing I can think of. Instead, hotel rooms are opportunities. They're cleaned off and the light's great. What an opportunity. Okay, makes sense. So we're talking a bit more about the mundane here, aren't we? I want to tell you something that happened to me a few years ago that proves the mundane is all often the best situation you can find yourself in. Years ago, I worked on one of those day-in-the-life photo books. You remember them? Big coffee table books. Where they sent out teams of photographers all over the world in the same week to document a place. They had several exotic locations on a list for me to choose from, and I could have chosen Israel, the Middle East, Russia. But then I noticed that on the bottom of the list was one location that all the other photographers had passed up. It said simply, Flatville, Illinois. And I said, really? Flatville, Illinois? I want that one. And my bosses there on that project were shocked. They said, you kidding? All the other photographers, none of them had even asked about that one. They didn't think they'd be able to, to give that assignment away, the editor said. And I said, no, 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 that one looks good. That's for me. What is that, farming? And they said, yeah. And I asked if it was flat there, and they said, I guess. And I said, okay, count me in. Hmm. Why would I say that? Could have traveled anywhere in the world, had assistance, all this stuff. Why would I want to go to Flatville, Illinois? I knew. I knew that if this place was flat as a pancake, the light was going to be great there at sunset. There wouldn't be any mountains to block the light. I knew it would have really clean backgrounds because in Illinois, everything's been cleaned up for farming, if it's rural. I knew the people would probably be nice, and I thought I'd probably get to eat homemade pie and sweet corn. It was that time of the year. It was summer. That's a great bonus. Well, I went there, and it turned out it was all true. It was all true. You know, I made frame after frame that my editors liked. And the best part was, there was nothing expected of me because it was supposed to be very boring. That's great. And yet there were tons of pictures to shoot there. And I would say, there are probably better pictures than if I'd gone overseas. The farm family I concentrated on was so happy. They never, uh, they never had any attention paid to them. They loved having me there. I had complete freedom and complete access, 24 hour a day access to these folks and they were very happy I was there. It's kind of like I was part of their family. And that was exactly what I was looking for. The, the point of this book is they were really looking for technology, technology and farming. At the time, this type of a cell phone, that was high technology. And so I would just work until the light got too rough. The light's not great here, but we're using a long lens, leading lines everywhere, right? Just trying to show the compression and how big that soybean field is. Or just driving in, I had my little radar detector, you could see the road in the rearview mirror. Rule of thirds, rule of thirds, rule of thirds, right? Okay, leading lines, leading lines everywhere. Trying to look at technology as far as ultrasounds to see whether cattle are pregnant or not. Get right, in, right here up close. Rule of thirds again, soft light, getting down low right into the face of that cow. It's being held to be examined to see if it's pregnant or not. All right, that works. Maybe that one's a little better. No, probably not, maybe not. But I tried it because I wanted the belt buckle. So I tried that too. Out on the county road, out in front of their farmhouse, the kids listening to music. This is a while ago, obviously. They were using cassette recorders back, or cassette players back then. But the leading line, rule of thirds, having something in the corners of the frame, paying off the, the viewer. Same place, nice and clean. Do I wish that these wires weren't going into her head? Yeah, yeah, but. The bubble helps, and the early time of day helps. Nice light. Here's the same girl a little later in the day. She loved to chew bubble gum. Just a nice long lens there in her backyard. Cleans the grass up to a soft palette of green. That'll work. Maybe we're around a little bit more here. Probably the other one's better because the colors were better in it. 
Now we can actually see her face. I'm just moving around the same girl playing the same little handheld video game, just moving around her, just moving around her, looking at all the different things I can do. And then late in the day when the light gets nice and soft, look at this, we're out on the porch, dad's working on a computer silhouetted, the young, the young son framed up in the doorway, the light's nice. We don't have to pay people off. We don't have to have something in every corner, but this picture's got stuff going on in it. And there's mom coming to the door. The light's a little bit different. She's about ready to say the pie's ready, hopefully. Dad out on the front porch, the tractor. We see the farm scene. It's clean. Look at how his face stands out right there. Pops from the edge of the house. If we'd move back or forward, the face wouldn't have popped out as well. So I'm thinking about that all the time. So we went here from what other people thought would be mundane to extraordinary because the access I had there, hmm. And I was able to be there when the light was good and these folks were happy to have me and it was a great experience. Now I mentioned pie, right? I love pie. Oh yes, they had pie. You think any of those photographers going over the Middle East got homemade pie? I think not. So I was quite happy to be there, thank you. Quite happy. You know. People will marvel at your work from the quiet or mundane situations because nobody bothers to shoot them, and I mean nobody. I would much rather shoot at a place where there's nothing expected of me, and I mean zero, than go into a high pressure situation where great photos are absolutely demanded or else. For example, at the Olympics, man, the pressure is on. You have to do great pictures, and there's a bunch of different sports going on at once, usually in different locations. What if you're at venue A and a famous athlete breaks their leg at venue B and you weren't there and you miss it. It's really pressure packed and you can't really wander around. You don't have much access, it's tightly controlled. You have a little badge, you have to stand here or stand there, you need a pass for everything. Huh, I've often said this, I would so much rather shoot a six man football game in some small town in Nebraska than the Olympics and I mean that, honest to goodness. So if you go to a small town and you cover six man football, you got carte blanche access. You can be with the team as they're doing quiet time in the kindergarten room, just laying around before the game. You can ride the bus with them. You can go downtown. You can be with them when the light's great. You can show downtown. Look at this, long lens, compressing distance here. Nice, subtle light. All right, I don't like that pole, but I can't clean up the world and I'm a fly on the wall. I'm just getting them. I'm just getting them hanging out. Look at this on the field, last light of day, just caressing that front of that player right there, caressing right here. I'm using the sky as a big negative space to try to make it a compositional element. Not much there, but I'm using that sky too. It's big and wide open, it's Nebraska. That's all right. The kids saying a prayer right before the game, after practice, kneeling down. Slow shutter speed here with a tripod. Look at that car moving. See the movement we get with a slow shutter speed, tripod with a cable release? I know they're gonna be kneeling in prayer for quite a while because I've asked about that. I've already asked about that. Just a nice, quiet scene, nice and quiet. I stayed back to a respectful distance. And now out on the field as the game's getting ready to be played. Again, the sky is a character for me. Look at all the pink light. Lovely, lovely. And then I can get a ladder and I can get up and I can get them singing the Star Spangled Banner as they bring the flag out. It's just a nice quiet place. The pressure is off. Nobody expects anything from me. On kids playing out on the field. It's all right. Everything about it's nice. Everything. There's not a bad seat in the house really. If you have the opportunity to go do six man football or anything where people aren't expecting something, I would so encourage it. You know, most people would think of that as just mundane, right? It's not the Super Bowl, is it? But I just thought of it as lovely. And to be honest with you, if every shoot were like that, I'd be in heaven. Most of my shoots have a lot more pressure on them. You know, it's no exaggeration for me that I would rather photograph a local farmer or say a windmill repairman than the President of the United States. And it's true. When you get to these little photograph places in the middle of nowhere, the people are glad you're there. They are. They're happy somebody's taking the time to, to document their lives. Instead of getting mad at me for intruding because they have so many people wanting a piece of them, in the case of famous people or big time sports, these guys are just glad you're there. And that's great. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Let's talk about a few more quiet places and how you can make great pictures out of them. 
How about if we choose hog farms in southeastern Nebraska? Let's go to a hog farm or two. How can you make good pictures at a pig farm? Let's see if we can make good pictures. You know, pigs are interesting to me. But the epitome of a mundane subject to most other people, what can we do with them? Oh, let's see. Let's fish around and see. What can we do? Well, first of all, they're naturally interesting. They're kind of cute. They're personable. If you want to get fancy, you could throw in a little bit of flash on them, a little supplemental light. You make it more interesting, just like that. Balance out the daylight with it. Okay, that'll work. What else? Oh, getting down in the mud, of course. If they're pigs. You want to get right down in the mud. Now, of course, you're going to want to take a shower when you get home. It's not pleasant smelling. A little bit of flash here. That helps. Just working around. Boy, that pink framed by that fence. Look at leading lines, framing devices, perfectly right in there. Could it be a better picture? Yeah, probably. Another person back there or something going on up here. But you know what? It's cute and it's clean. The light's nice and soft. A little bit too much flash thrown on here. This almost works. The flash is just a little too bright, a little too bright. And I wish that the ambient was dialed down. I wish the house lights were darker. Faster shutter speed would make my sky a bit darker and reduce the exposure on that snout. Maybe it'd work, maybe it'd work. So what else is there to shoot that's mundane? The stuff that, of just everyday life. Well, how about the people that raise these pigs? Now that gives us another level. That gives us another layer. And that gets us really into a more interesting scene. We go from just pigs to the family that manages the pigs. Well, let's take a look. Take this scene. It's way too early in the morning. This little girl has to help her mom and do chores. Felt kind of sorry for her, right? She has to help mom work the pigs and give them shots. And the pigs don't like it. And it's just, it's way too early. And she's got to go to school yet. She's comforting the piglets as best she can. But you know, they're a handful and they're squirmy and mom thinks it's funny. And mom and dad especially think it's funny that I'm there to hang out. And then there's just a little tender moment. That's the last piglet. It's a quiet moment. A lot of dead space in here. Wish there was something else, a dog or a pig that got loose, something else. But there's not, and I'm not directing. I'm just hanging out. And that works. That's okay. That'll work. Let's go to another farm, another pig farm, believe it or not, at friends right down the road, my friends the Montgomery's. This is a family-run operation. They work these pigs, mom, dad, the daughters. And the daughters are, the daughters are always arguing or goofing around. There's dad, Don Montgomery, moving pigs. And then we go with Nancy and her girls, and they're just goofing around. See how happy they are? They're, they're kind of posing, they're voguing for me because they don't have many photographers show up to their pig farm. So here they are out working. Nice soft light. Love the blue jumpers. They stand right out. Right here. That's about the right angle. If I were to get down low, that sky would be too bright, wouldn't it? And I'm not using flash here. So I try to stay up high keep that horizon line up high so I'm not fighting that bright sky because the sky, that soft overcast light, that's the light source. I'm up high looking down, works out, works out. And then I always stick around late. I get there early, stick around late and try to just get whatever I can. Little unexpected moments or the girls sticking their tongues out at each other as we head back to the main barn. So when we go, when we go after this type of stuff, I'm just looking for interesting pictures, right? And it doesn't matter. I could be at a pig farm or I could be at a ranch. Ranching is a bit more romantic than pig farming, right? To some people, I guess so. Uh, I've shot on a lot of ranches and I never get tired of it. Man, it is a bit of the old west. Let's check this out. This is out in the sand hills, wide open spaces near Whitman, Nebraska. I love the color and the amazing characters here. Again, staying up high, horseback, trying to keep that sky to a minimum because it's actually quite bright and I don't want it to compete. I think about shooting the meal, the potluck dinner after branding. I love the hat, the spurs, working hay bales, riding the hay bales, make sure they don't fall out as you're lowering them down. Look at this, look at how he pops out from that hay bale right there. A little moon up in the corner, nice soft light. Look at how his hat is right inside that lariat. Perfect. Now I shot a lot of pictures to get that. I was behind that guy all day long, all day long. Uh, just a little bit out into the snow. Makes that dog's head pop out. All these things though. Doesn't look like something out of an old West movie. Maybe it's, maybe it's mundane, maybe it's not. Maybe it depends on how you look at it, how you see it. 
most of the time, I think I'm so lucky to be in this place where the people are so friendly, they want me here, they're excited to have me here, and man, it's the real thing, it's the old west. I'm excited to be there. So I never think of anything as mundane anymore. I think of this stuff as a golden opportunity everywhere I go. It's just a chance to make great, interesting pictures. A rainbow with cowboys, come on, you can't beat that, can you? Spurs, a little bit of glow there. Man, that's why I like living where I do. Now let's take something, a look at something that's even quieter, an office setting. I've seen lots of photos of offices, and I've taken lots of photos in offices, and you know what? It doesn't scare me. Let's look at a few situations, situations that you can get into. You know, first off, I'm always on the lookout for something interesting, aren't I? And offices in general, they can be tough. They can be a little bit boring. What can you shoot in an office? Most offices are quite cluttered. Well, let's work that. Let's talk about file cabinets and file. I love the way the red of the shirt mimics the folders. Let's talk about file rooms. Let's talk about somebody's desk, somebody who has too much paperwork. She's drowning in an ocean of paperwork. Just a little window light here. Just something interesting. It could be somebody's messy office, buried in paperwork. How do you make it sing? Literally, I didn't show the face of the woman in the file room or at her desk, right? Just her hand on top of the papers or hiding behind things. I just want to show that she's going under fast. That's it. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Or in the case of this office, I chose to shoot this on black and white. This is at my accountant's, Kyle Sitzman. Just black and white to give the portraits a certain look. I want to do portraits of everybody in his office. And notice how I try to say something about each personality there. I want to say something about everybody. What is it about their office? I try to shoot little, little detail shots as I go along, like Kyle's a hunter. He's a big member of Ducks Unlimited. So I'm not just getting them sitting behind their desk. I know everybody there pretty well, and I try to photograph something that deals with their personality. Veronica, the lady at the front desk, and her typing on her keyboard. And there's Les. He runs the place. His head, this is a little bit of a conflict, but his head still reads there, still pops out. He's big into golf, all right? Dennis has a, foot, a football autographed to him by the past coach of the Nebraska football team. The, the telephone cord could be tangled up because they're too busy to unwind it. It's tax season. Suman, one of the guys there, great smile. He's into sailing ships. He's actually from Panama. He's, I've blocked his face there a little bit. I've got a picture of his face in the previous frames. But I'm trying to work this, I really am trying to craft this, and use these pictures to work together as a team. I want all the clutter. I want everything about these folks. They're nice, they're in an accounting office. What do we do? We show numbers, we show, we show somebody that loves Mountain Dew, we show anything we can, reflections off windows, putting another billing, billing statement in the mail, that's what they like, dialing phones, shoes, stress control ruler, anything really. I'm trying to just capture the dance of life. That's all I'm doing, right? I'm trying to do all these shots to get the people's personalities there, to get a complete rendition of everybody. That's it, that's it. So, for a final example of how to conquer the mundane, let's take a few shots in an office right here at the Great Courses. I did that here just to show you, right? So here's our crack team, all right? Tony, Kat, and Marcy. And this is the green room. This is where I hang out when I'm not taping here. And we're just talking about, well, bringing you the finest photography course you've ever seen, of course. We're just talking, could we get some pictures here? Sure, yeah, let's make some pictures here. That's the green room. What can we do with this cluttered space? Oh, it's got a nice window. Let's try to do something here. There's Tony, he's kind of that swimmer's physique. He's always eating healthy. So we've got him framed perfectly in the window. He's got an apple. Basically, I said, in 15 minutes, I can do all three of you guys and make you look good. So let's look. Cat, the pen is mightier than the sword. She's my content editor. She puts that pen right up in front of her. Look at that, smiling away. Perfect. I love the way the color in the pen balances out with the light. Very shallow depth of field. I want the pen in focus. She goes slightly soft. Don't need a lot of depth of field for that. And then there's Marcy, steely-eyed. She looks like a bird of prey in another life, right? Well, let's hold up the jacket. That brown really brings out the green in her earrings and her shirt. She's known for her earrings and her jewelry. So, great, that provides a nice smooth background, doesn't it? Three pictures in 15 minutes. Is it high art? 
I don't know, but it's fun. And you saw how that room looked. Not much, right? And they like these pictures. And they've got them hanging up in their offices. So that's good. It's all good. I mean, a situation really like that, do you expect to get much? You can make something out of it. There's not much going on, but if you think about it, you can bring out each person's personality. You can do this. What I'm trying to get at here, folks, in case you don't get it, is there's no such thing as mundane. In my opinion, mundane does not exist. Mundane, mundane is an opportunity. It's, there's no such thing as boring. It's all how you view your life. And in my opinion, it's all great stuff. Common mistakes. The most common mistake here is not believing that the entire world is your oyster. It is. If you can't find anything to take pictures of, you need to start thinking differently because you're just not trying. You're not looking. If you go about it the right way, great pictures can be had everywhere and every day. Also realize that some situations are better than others. Yes, it's true. Some hotel rooms are indeed better to shoot in than others. Some have, some have better color, better windows that allow more light in at really good times of the day. Having other people in the room with you will add a layer of drama and complexity, though, that you can't get when it's just you. And there's no excuse for not making good pictures then. You know, I know I've said it before, too, but it's true. Most of the time, the answer is no to the question, should I take a picture now? Probably not, unless, you've, unless you're really compelled to do so because you've figured out how to solve the problem of seeing quiet things in a really good way, taking the mundane and elevating it. Don't take pictures just to be taking them. Take pictures because you know you're onto something interesting. Think about this. What would Joel do? Would Joel shoot this? Am I gonna hammer you if you show me your picture and it's really super boring? Come on, don't do it, don't do it. So your assignment for this lecture, I want you to go to the most visually uninteresting place, you knew this was coming, go to the most boring place you can think of and make a really interesting picture. Maybe that's a high-end hotel room, it could be a stripped-down motel room, take somebody with you so you've got somebody to shoot, take a picture of yourself in the mirror or something, take a dog if they allow pets or even if they don't. Just photograph the TV if you wanted to and couldn't figure out any other way to come up with something interesting. Be sure and show what's around the TV though and let's pray there's something interesting. Let's pray. Huh? Don't think you can do it? Sure, sure. I use, my, uh, I use my own legs and feet all the time to do something interesting. They're always with me and they can't say no. So I try to take pictures. Look, for a, for a story on Florida's coast, look, the weather, man, the weather's a big topic in Florida. I couldn't think of what else to shoot, so I thought the weather's important, orange juice is important. So I photographed the glass of orange juice, put my bare legs up on the balcony, and I've got a scene here, right? I made a picture. There's a person in it, but it's the weatherman from the TV channel. I used him to make the picture interesting. You can use TVs, you know, why not? Why not? So go find that boring place and work it. Remember, think of that boring place as a stage and wait for something to happen. Wait for a character, a character to appear. Maybe it's a family member too. Maybe it's some talking head on the television talking at you. Maybe it's just out the window. I don't know. But make something out of a very uninteresting un un place. I tell you what, if you can pull this off, you're going to be a great photographer. When it's really a jazzy, exciting situation, you're gonna be able to make those frames, no problem, guaranteed. It is the mark of a real professional to take an assignment they care nothing about or even dislike and make a great frame out of it. So, I hope you've mastered your camera now because next up is the main, main event. Birthdays, weddings, and holidays. How do we make the most out of those very special occasions in which the action comes at you fast and furious? I will tell you in great detail, of course, next lecture. See you then.